Hey guys, Crypto Lazy Geek here, and I am super excited because I am testing a new piece of software. Well, it's not new; it's fairly old, but it just got into version 1.0 beta, um, which is this piece of software is called Cyril. Uh, it is made by French developers, and it is a free and open source alternative to PixInsight. Um, well, not quite; it doesn't do that much yet, but it does two of the biggest things that I always want to do, which is background extraction and uh, photometric color calibration of your images. And those are, very, are two very powerful tools that you can do in Cyril with free open source software. And then you can save your image, open it in GIMP to do further processing with curves and that kind of stuff. And it is super exciting to see so much activity in the open source community. And I think, you know, if PixInsight is too expensive for you and, you know, AstroPixel processor did not work well for you for whatever reason, even though I, I keep hearing great things about it and Star Tools doesn't work well for you and you don't want to pay for software, even though you've spent a huge amount of money on your hardware for imaging or you're just starting out, right? You have a DSLR, you have a compact camera, you're doing phone based astrophotography. And so you don't want to spend big bucks on uh, processing software. Well, Siri is for you. Now Cyril can do pre-processing, which is, you know, you've taken many 10 second frames. Uh, you need to align them and stack them together to get a better signal to noise ratio to basically to get a cleaner picture. Well, uh, you can use Cyril to do that, or you can use Deep Sky Stacker. Both are free. And what I'm going to focus on today in Cyril is not the pre-processing since we already had a good free tool for that, which was Deep Sky Stacker. Now I want to focus on the post processing because as far as I know, we haven't had really good alternatives to PixInsight. Uh, one of my commenters, and thank you so much, by the way, talked to, um, pointed me to some uh, scripts for GIMP uh, for astrophotography processing. So I want to try that at some point. So that's one thing, but Serial is another thing and the photometric color calibration is awesome. So uh, let's open up the serial interface and you can probably see my screen right now with serial. And I've opened up an old image of uh, M42. Now this image was taken with, um, a, I don't, I think it was an ASI 294 MC Pro. It was uh, uncooled. Uh, and it, so it basically you, you can think of it as taken with a DSLR really. And it was taken from Death Valley. <laughs> Are using an alt as mount, uh, the AS, AZ, AZ GTI in alt as mode, and uh, it's only like 30 minutes of data uh, of uh, 30 second exposures. So it was uh, quite a lot of fun to take this picture, but as you can see, it's very purple. <laughs> And we want to fix that, right? And in PixInsight would be PixInsight with uh, background extraction, with color calibration, all that kind of stuff. And we can do the same in Cyril. So to open the image, by the way, I just click on that open button and then select the file. It is open and by default, it will actually um, split it into channels and then we have RGB. Now, when you first open it, by the way, you will see something like this. Uh, which is the linear view of the image, just like in any other processing software. And what you want to do is click on here and then go to auto stretch to be able to really see the image. And I can see I have some stacking artifacts here at the top of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make things a bit simpler for me. I am going to uh, crop that image. For that, I would take a selection, but you can see if I try to do something on the RGB tab, it tells me, no, no, no. You want to do that on the um, other tabs. So you can only do operations on the other tabs. So I am going to do a selection like this with the Orion Nebula more or less uh, selected. We have almost a horse nebula, but not quite in that field of view. And then I'm going to right click and do crop. And like that, we have cropped our image. And the next step is getting rid of that weird uh, magenta color. And I'm going to go into image processing. We're going to go color calibration and we're going to go photometric color calibration. And for that, I'm going to click on M42 and we have the Orion Nebula. Clicking on that pre-populates some right ascension and declination coordinates, basically what it is. And then I need to put in my focal distance, which is 200 millimeters, and my pixel size, which I think for the 294 is 
uh, 4.99 micrometers. And why is this necessary? This is necessary because it needs to know the field of view of the image so it can identify each individual stars and compare them to a database of stars that have been analyzed, spect like the, whose spectrum has been analyzed. And so we know what color each star is supposed to be. And based on that, we'll be able to find the right set of colors for that par particular image. And if I click on OK, um, the, uh, the software will work. It will identify the images, it will do the plate solving, and it will apply the photometric color calibration. Now, from time to time, it gives me a weird result like that. And if I undo and uh, redo it, sometimes it works again. It's a bit weird. And here it is, we've done it again. So this is something weird. If you get super weird colors after the first run, just try it again and, until you get decent colors. And here we are, we have decent colors on the Orion Nebula. So we've gotten rid of that weird tint that I had, which is great. So I can close this, we're done. It took me, a, you know, a, third times the charm really that was the third time I ran it and then it worked so <laughs> uh, you know little uh, weird things going on here and there and the weird thing is you'll see each time the number of stars like 16, 165 166 152 is a bit different I have no idea why so I just undo redo it until I get the right color Meh, bit weird but you know better software free and open source so that's still pretty good then i'm going to do remove the green noise because we have a lot of green background here and this is basically equivalent to the pixinsight scnr and here we are we do not have that green background anymore which is good and we can do more stuff we could do background extraction we don't really need it on that image but yeah we might have a bit of weird thing going on here so we could try to go i'm not sure how well it's going to work but you have a background extraction tool um, that is uh, here and you can select samples in your image and you need to do that on the monochrome uh, channels and i'm just going to select a lot of sample here a few samples at the back here and um, yeah, call it a day. And that basically will use uh, those samples to generate a background that it will then subtract or divide from the image to remove like any weird discoloration that you have. So after the background extraction, well, I think it identified a few weird colors there. So I probably don't want to do that. But maybe you know I could rerun the photometric color calibration to fix that, and uh, we would have gotten still rid of the gradient. So that's a possibility. And here we are. Uh, we've removed the background. So this is prior to background removal, post background removal, right? So it might actually have worked. I, I think I can see a bit more nebulosity here. So it's a bit like the workflow is a bit different than PixInsight. So it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, but you know, uh, we can, we, we can take what we have. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. You can do stuff like deconvolution as well uh, by hitting on control and the scroll wheel, you can see the result. Uh, so deconvolution here, we obviously have some ringing. Uh, that is done, so I would want to play with the parameters until that uh, that ringing is uh, is properly gone. And in theory, um, it should like you know make the nebula a bit sharper, which it might. You know, I'm not a, I'm not an expert. We could increase the iteration count. All this this kind of stuff is doable. I'm not sure whether it does a star mask automatically or not. Who knows what it does, but you know, there is the convolution. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it's here, right? So it's still fun stuff that we can, uh, we can play with. And uh, for your transform median filter, this is for, um, I, I believe it would do noise reduction basically. Uh, so that would basically remove hot pixels. If you have a lot of hot pixels, like with an uncooled camera, that can be something that can be uh, useful. And, um, Let's now do basically the histogram uh, stretch. So we want to stretch the image. I'll go back to linear to see how the nebula looks like when it is linear. And then I can click on this uh, stretch icon here, click on the auto stretch to the image, and then 
I can either reset or apply it. Now I find I found that the scale thingy and moving the indicators is a bit weird, but maybe yeah, we want to stretch a bit less aggressively so that the core of the nebula is not overburnt, or we can just like keep with the, the auto stretch. For now, maybe I'll keep with the auto stretch, but this is how you can kind of like amend it a little bit so you don't burn out everything uh, too much. And now our image is like this. We almost don't need to do anything more, but what we can do is we can do some color saturation. And the color saturation seems to do a mask using the preserve background option here. So it will only saturate more the nebula itself rather than the background. And you can see it's very visible here how uh, before saturation, after saturation, it did not affect the background, but it affected the nebula. Um, and we can apply that and see that we indeed have much more color in here. Now we still have some green here, so maybe I want to uh, remove uh, the green noise some more. And here we are, we've removed more of the green noise. We have like a pretty decent nebula picture really uh, on, uh, on M42 here. And uh, let's try some um, uh, contrast limited adapt adaptive histogram um, calibration, which basically does, it seems to me, the same thing as local histogram equalization in PixInsight. So this is before, this is after. The image is more co contrasty and punchy, which is nice. I am not sure what those options here at the bottom do, but you know, oh, it seems this one will, uh, will increase the effect of the, um, of the transformation. And maybe, wow, that's a lot. It feels like I would want to do a bit more color saturation after that. Um, but you know, this is a tool that is available to us. And I think it is, it is pretty sweet uh, to have this uh, like that. And I can apply this and uh, maybe, you know, I could do deconvolution to try and diminish the size of the stars a little bit. So we can go back to uh, deconvolution, zoom in a bit, uh, reduce the radius until we don't get those dark zones, but we still get them. So we're going to abandon. But, you know, it's like this. I'm going to try to go back to the beginning. This is what we started with. Not a bad image, but a bit purple. And if I go to the end, this is what we're um, ending up with. So, you know, it's a very valid tool and having the photometric color calibration and uh, the background extraction makes this tool invaluable. This is really, really awesome as far as I'm concerned. And now I could right click on this image and say, we're gonna save it as a TIFF file, for example, and that will actually save it in your um, uh, pictures folder by default, or though you can change the working folders in the options. We're gonna click the save button. We've now saved the image and I could open up the GIMP, for example, to get further processing done to this image. And here we have the image in GIMP, so I can, uh, I can go and you know, uh, play with my, uh, my colors and play with the saturation, play with the, the exposure parameters. So, and like, you know, if I want something super punchy and clipping the blacks, I can do that. I can uh, increase the gamma, decrease the gamma. I can do all that I want within GIMP to get a proper uh, image. And so I think it's a really powerful tool to have this Cyril. It's a great addition to an arsenal of tools. And especially if you're just starting and you're using your phone or a standard pocket camera or a DSLR and you don't want to spend a lot of money on software, I think this is a great piece of software to start with um, without having to pay a penny to see like, okay, do I want to keep going with the, the hobby or not? It's still better. It has its issues as you saw with the photometric color calibration. I had to run it three times until I got a good, good result. But otherwise, you know, I think it's awesome. And with that, um, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. If this kind of video interests you, if you like astronomy, astrophotography, if you look 
like looking at stars if you want to get started in the hobby feel free to go down below click on that subscribe button and the notification bell because i think this channel is really just for you and you know as always feel free to go down click on that like button leave a comment down below with any um, suggestions that you have uh, what i should be doing how i can use this piece of software better uh cyril which is, which is awesome and uh you know anything like that i read all of the comments and i answer most so as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember, whenever you can, to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.